They're two of the biggest automakers in the world, and yet both Volkswagen and Toyota have taken their time embracing the all-electric future. Now that's set to change soon, of course, as both automakers are shoveling billions into EV development. The two models that we brought together today represent their respective automakers' tips of the spear in this new future. Both the Toyota BZ4X and Volkswagen ID.4 go about electrifying that lucrative small SUV segment in very different ways. Let's see how this all-electric face-off plays out. Hi there, sorry to interrupt. We'll get you back to Kyle's electrifying comparison in a second, but first let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor. Custom made for an exact fit, WeatherTech offers complete protection for your vehicle's interior, even electric vehicles like these. There's the original WeatherTech floor liner and the new floor liner HP, made from a more flexible material. Both work with your OE floor mat clips and protect up the sides of your footwell. Plus the floor liner HP comes with spikes for even better grip. I have one set in my car and another in my wife's, and we both love them. And let's not forget the cargo liner, which is great to protect your vehicle from everything you might need to throw in the back of your all-new electric SUV. All WeatherTech products come with a lifetime guarantee, so do yourself a favor and click the link in the description below and find the perfect fit for your car today. Back to you, Kyle. So we start with the German. Now the ID4 showed up on the scene a few years ago to really usher in VW's electric push on this side of the Atlantic. And then for 2023, the German company moved production to a shiny new facility in Chattanooga. And with that move comes a few choice upgrades both inside and under the skin. Now before we get to any of that, let's talk about the looks of the ID4. Now it's a very streamlined one box shape and it's a, a more smoothed out shape than what you'd see with a Taos or a Tiguan. Uh, if you're feeling particularly uncharitable, you could make a minivan comparison, but I'm not going to do that. In fact, I think the ID4 is pretty handsome, especially from the rear three quarter where you get that strong shoulder line. The move to localized production brought in a bunch of new colors, including this dark tourmaline blue hue. It's easy to pick out Der People's car on the road too, since it's got a bright light up badge on both ends. In fact, fun little tidbit, there are three VW logos on the nose if you look close enough. Both of these EV SUVs have dual motor setups, which gives them electronic all-wheel drive. The VW is the comparative hot hatch of this duo though, because it has 295 horsepower and 339 pound-feet of torque. It also has the larger battery pack, with the underfloor setup having a capacity of 82 kilowatt hours. Now that translates to around 255 miles on a single charge or 410 kilometers. The VW is also the smaller of these two. So at just shy of 181 inches tip to tail, it gives up around four inches to the Toyota. So you might think that with that smaller footprint, the VW has a little less space inside. Well, no, not really. In fact, it has the better measurements of these two in all the ways that really matter, I mean, you lose one inch of front legroom compared to the Toyota, but otherwise, yeah, the VW is very spacious. Uh, this glass roof definitely helps. It unlocks additional headroom over lesser models. But what is also a really nice touch is just this blue and white two-tone interior. It's leatherette. It's not real leather because EVs and green, environmentally friendly stuff. But it's such a nice breath of fresh air to have actual color in a cabin. Up front at the base of the windshield, you have a light bar, which shows both, you know, notifications from the driver assists, such as blind spot monitoring. And also it will tell you when the voice assistant is activated. So if I say, hello ID, I'm warm. Sure, cooling now. There we go, very helpful. Other features inside the cabin that really lift the ID4, you've got a wireless charger here in the center console. In fact, the entire center console was redone for North American tastes, which gives it more storage space, uh, which is always handy. It is a little noisy, I find, this uh, center console, if I'm leaning on it. I have customizable LED ambient lighting, and we've got memory seats up ahead. Uh, that's great for the front two seats, but really unique in this category is that you actually have massage functions for both of these seats. 
Um, that's not to say that these aren't incredibly comfortable, very supportive seats anyway, but on a longer drive, who's gonna turn down a massage? Those are the nice things about the tech features in the ID4. Of course, I have to talk about the infotainment. It's both better and worse than the complaints that you've read over the years or seen in videos. So at 12 inches, the display is a pretty good size and it's easy to use. It uses a grid system. There's not a lot of submenus that you can get lost in, but you have these touch sensitive sliders for climate that just are awkward no matter what. VW is fixing that slightly by making them illuminated in for, uh, future models, but still it feels like a miss. More annoying than that, however, are the window controls on the door. So for whatever reason, there are only two switches here and you have a separate button to lock and unlock for the rear. So if you want to lower all four windows at once, well, you're gonna have to do two at a time. I don't understand. Now there is a bright spot in the VW's tech suite and that's the digital instrument cluster. It's steering column mounted, so that means no matter how you adjust your wheel, it's easily in view. And because of its size, well, it only shows the really necessary info. Great work, really enjoy it. Uh, the shifter up here that's mounted to the side of it, uh, it's a bit of an acquired taste. You get used to it. And I do really enjoy that when you shift from regular drive to the boosted mode that enhances regenerative braking. I like that it stays in that when I do a three point turn. I don't have to switch back to B from D every time. So we're gonna talk about the shifter. We might as well talk about how the ID4 drives. Needless to say, this is the quicker of these two models. It has more horsepower, more torque. It does way more, but it does have a larger battery pack, so we kind of expect that. Uh, it's quick when I need it to be. And in B mode, it does have fairly strong regenerative braking, and VW has made a conscious effort to avoid one pedal driving. So you can lift off and it will slow down, but you know, at, at super low speeds, it, it eases off. So you're going to actually have to use the brake. One interesting thing I will say about the VW compared to well, most EVs that I've driven, is that it has quite a stiff go pedal. I'd say throttle, but I'm not sure that's entirely accurate. Uh, it just requires a little more force, but then you have a lot of travel, so it's really easy to drive smoothly. And drive smoothly is how I would sum up the ID4. While it is more powerful, it's not necessarily sportier than the Toyota. It's just comfortable, it feels relaxed. You hear bumps, but you don't really feel them too much through the cabin. There's also not a lot of wind noise because, well, this is an EV and so to maximize range, VW has made sure that its aero properties are excellent. Pricing is dependent on which side of the border you live on. The US kicks off the line at a super affordable $40,290, but this swanky tester rings up at $54,000. In Canada, the ID4 starts at 48,000 and change, about a grand more than the Toyota, but the as-tested gap shrinks to just 6,000, with this thing ringing in at around $64,000 all in. So in our previous eight SUV EV feature, we talked about how the Volkswagen ID4 does regular car things really well. It's not weird, it's not gimmicky, well, except for those bad touch controls, and it even does some light SUV stuff like towing. Now, if you're looking to jump into the all electric world, you'll find a whole bunch of pleasant familiarity here in the Volkswagen. So after approximately a kajillion hybrids, not to mention two RAV4 EVs, one of which was co-developed with a little company known as Tesla, Toyota now has its first dedicated EV for our market, the BZ4X. Now I've beaten this drum before, but it bears repeating, this is the RAV4 of EVs. But that's been the best-selling SUV in North America for years now, so surely that's a good connection to have, right? You won't mistake the Busy Forks for Toyota's moneymaker, though. While the BZ is close to the same size and has broadly similar proportions, its detailing is on a whole other level. It takes a more angular approach than the streamlined ID4, with heaps of contrasting black bits, be it matte on the hood and lower bits, or glossy on those chunky arches. There's more than a passing resemblance to the crown in the headlights, too. The next RAV4 connection comes from the powertrain. Now, admittedly, this one runs on nothing but electrons, but it has outputs of 214 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. 
at least in the dual motor version, which puts this very, very close to the RAV4 hybrid. Now it is carrying around an extra 700 pounds, but I'm gonna chalk up most of that difference to the 72.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now that's roughly in the middle ground between most of the BZ4X's competitors' base batteries and their optional larger capacities. What that means is less range than the VW. With all wheel drive, the Toyota is rated to 222 miles or 367 kilometers on a single charge. So if you're road tripping, you're going to be stopping more often. And each stop is going to take more time too because the all wheel drive version of the Busy Forks is capped at 100 kilowatts of DC fast charging potential. That's with warm weather too. If the mercury is dipping, well then the charge speeds are dipping in sync with it. And Toyota has already warned that you could lose fast charging capability altogether when the temperature is below freezing. So it might kind of sound like I'm ragging on the Toyota BZ4X, and that's all because it showed up to the EV scene a little behind the curve. From behind the wheel though, it has a much better impression, and that's because this is a very cool interior and very different from that rugged RAV4. You've got this sweet small diameter steering wheel, and it allows you to set it really low, allowing you to see the instrument panel that's set deep in the dash. Now this is my favorite part of the car. It's such a cool cockpit-like feel, and not only does it keep your attention where it needs to be or closer to where it needs to be, which is the road, it also eliminates the need for a head-up display. The rest of the cabin is visually pleasing too. This is the mid-spec or top trim in Canada XLE model. The wraparound dashboard design and slim semi-floating main section give it a comfortable cockpit-like feel. The hardy basket weave-like cloth fabric from the seats wraps around the dashboard too, providing some welcome contrast. Toyota's designers have remixed that texture for other parts of the cabin too, like the dash-mounted speaker covers and the center console cubby lid for the wireless charger. Now that bit is nice in terms of dedication to space, but I'm never a fan of keeping a charging device in an enclosed space. Toyota also could have dialed down the piano black, especially on the door panels. The seats use a combination of that cloth and Toyota's Softex artificial leather. Now, I will say that the front ones are pretty comfortable, although the complete lack of any power adjustment does feel a little stingy at this price range and with this trim. The rear seats are set pretty low, probably to maximize headroom, but it does mean that adults or taller folks may find underleg support a little lacking. Weirdly, even though the Toyota is bigger than the VW, it's less spacious. Um, it's also less spacious than the RAV4, which is something I didn't expect until I looked at the spec sheet. Uh, I thought EVs were supposed to unlock more space. That space disadvantage also extends to the tailgate. Uh, with the seats up, you're looking at about 20% less storage room than in the VW. So the Toyota does have a pretty good lineup of standard safety assists. You've got things like the full range adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, lane departure alert. It's, it's pretty solid. You are missing a 360 degree camera, just like the VW, but this, you know, is, is a lower trim. So that's somewhat understandable. The backup camera, however, is still the low res grainy one that we've seen in like base Corollas for as long as I can remember. Toyota's infotainment system is also pretty good, although it's not without its own minor annoyances, much like the VW's. So it's a big screen and it's pretty simple to use. And you also get wireless phone mirroring. So that's a, that's a big plus. On the downside, there's no volume knob. It's buttons, which is annoying to tap over and over again. And it can be a little hard to get out of, say, your phone screen and back to the native setup. So I've gone this long without talking about how the BZ4X drives. Now that's not because it's bad in any way, because it's it's not. It just it just kind of exists. So it's smoother to drive than an equivalent RAV4. It's better damped. It's quieter, but it lacks that premium feel that you get in the ID4, and it's certainly not as quick. Now that being said, I do like that Toyota has the boosted drive assist that you know ups regenerative braking. And like the VW's B mode, it persists when I shift out of particular drive modes. So I do enjoy that. And I like this steering. Like I said, it's a small steering wheel and it's light and it's very consistent. So it's easy to place. For better or worse, this feels like driving so many other Toyotas that are out there. 
but I'm not a big fan of this bizarre shifter. Why is it like a screw cap and I have to push and twist to shift? Why Toyota? Why? Now the Toyota does have the advantage of X mode though. Borrowed from co-developer Subaru, this gives the BZ4X numerous drive modes to handle rougher terrain. Plus with 8.1 inches of ground clearance, the BZ4X is better suited to cottage trails than that road-oriented VW. Pricing is another Toyota advantage. As tested, this BZ4X rings up at $46,355 in the US, or in Canada, it is $57,175. Now both of those prices do include destination. In the end, the Toyota's added off-road ability isn't enough to get it ahead of the Volkswagen here. Sure, it's cheaper, but it's comparatively poor value. You could go for a lower trim VW and get more features, or you can max out the Toyota and still miss out on some. This is the best BZ4X trim, but that's not enough. Now I'm not saying that the Volkswagen is perfect because it isn't. Those weird window and climate controls feel like a bad attempt at German humor. But if you look past those annoyances, you find a car that's comfortable, easy to drive, and just feels more special inside. That it also goes further on a charge, charges quicker, and is built right in the US are all bonuses, and they're enough to put the Volkswagen ID.4 as the winner of this comparison.